My learning is getting compromised. Okay, we got to get through this, so let's go. Okay, so the only thing that we are now going to be doing is working with substitution, elimination to help solve word problems, but we've been doing that. It's kind of been weaved throughout, so this should not be anything new. Now, we've got the sample price for hybrid cars, 28 the price of a similar car powered by gas is 21.5. The hybrid vehicle costs 18 cents per kilometer to operate. The non-hybrid costs 22 cents. Write a system of linear equations that models the total cost for each vehicle. Okay. This one's not as cut and dry as all the rest, right? Can somebody even reword this grade 10 language? What's this even saying? Like, uh, let's not worry about a equation right now. Like, what's it, what's it saying? Let's grade 10 it. Cheaper to drive over, drive over time, I think. Um, what should we call that? Like, that could be a variable, right? Because we don't know how much each is going to cost over time. Because I've actually heard if you buy a hybrid, it used to be this way. You'd have to drive it 10 years till it finally starts to come up. Because hybrids are a lot more. Like th this isn't that big of a price difference, but usually they're, this one's about 65, but usually about 10 grand more. So how long, how much gas saving, how long do I have to gas save till finally the hybrid starts to pull ahead, right? For a normal driver, maybe like if you're a cab driver, maybe that's going to make sense because you drive so much that it's going to pay off faster, right? But if only if you do the average is about twenty thousand a year, right? And that's what they base it off, and that's the warranties you get, right? You got to see is it worth it for you, right? Now, if you're one of those really intrinsically motivated environmentalists, you're going, I'm doing it because it's just better for the environment right away. I want to pay more. And that's a celebrity thing, right? They want to show they're, they're saving the environment. They got the money. They can do it. And, you know, they're not going to drive the big expensive Hummer around like Schwarzenegger, right? So can someone now give me a variable for how much this is going to cost us over time? Raven, what's a good... Okay, yeah. Now, 0 0.18, what, what affects how much money, Sean? Okay, or instead of K, why don't we put D for distance? Usually that's the variable. Okay, so 28,000 plus 0 0.18 D should equal that, I think, right? Total cost. And then 215,000 plus 0 0.22 D equals T. Now, remember, these are lines. When the two lines meet, what does that mean? They intersect, yeah? Yes? That's when they will cost the same. Who will win after that point? The hybrid will win after that point. The question you have to ask is, do I want to even have the same car for that long? Right? Because some people, a lot of people, probably 99% of people, Cost is a factor when they're buying a vehicle, okay? Those other 1%, they're fortunate, right? They're like, yeah, whatever it costs, order it, let's go. I want to have it by Tuesday. Uh, well, I can't get you by Tuesday. What about if I give you another 20000 I'll have it by Tuesday, okay? Those guys, that's not real. That's me. Yeah, I just like, yeah. I work at East Glen. I want it on Tuesday. They're like, East Glen, yeah, okay, bring it up. Okay, so, so just just the way it is, um, 
Now, since they both equal t, you have the advantage of actually making the two equal each other. Okay? Because this one equals t, can't I substitute this into there? Right? You can do that. Or we could use elimination. Could we not? Because will I get rid of a variable right now if I use elimination? I would get rid of t if I subtracted the two, wouldn't I? I gotta just stop my recording. Okay, so what do we want to do? Elimination, substitution. Let's do. S let's. D let we haven't tried it this way, where we could just go twenty-eight thousand plus zero point one eight d equals twenty-one five hundred plus zero point two two d. So this should even kind of make logical sense that I want to see when the two equal each other, right? That means that they would be the same total cost. Now, doesn't matter. We can do either one. Uh, hey, if you like your variable on the left, we can do that. So I'm going to minus 28,000, right? Minus 28,000. And I want to get this out of here, don't I? Because that's gone now. But I need to get this out of off this side. So I'm going to minus 0.22d. And this all goes 0.22d. Okay. So if you m subtract this, you should get negative 0.04d. And this will also be a negative number. And, and that's why these word problems make sense. That you shouldn't be getting... Because this is negative 6,500. You see, after I divide, I should have a positive. A negative D, that should, something should be going, uh, it's not good, right? When I ask you the number of coins, 4.5 shouldn't be a, an answer for coins, right? Or number of people, uh, I think it should be not A, getting negative, and B, I shouldn't have decimals, right? Things like that should, that's that wiseness, that math wiseness. I'm going to divide by 0 0.04, and I'm going to divide by 0 0.04, negative. And what do I get? 162,500 equals D. Okay? So, we can test it, and you'd see that... Uh, but we should put it in one of them, because it will tell us how much it costs to operate that car. So, the first one... We had 28,000 plus 0 0.18 times 162,500 kilometers equals, and I know you guys know how to use a calculator, so I'm just going to give it to you, 57,250. So you could say, you know, therefore... 162,500 kilometers must be driven for both cars to reach equal value. So that's eight years, right? Yeah. So the question I would ask, how long do you want to own this car, right? Um, you know, you learn some realities. After cars get to 100,000, the value drops like crazy, right? Yeah, but um, you'll see if you even go on to GG. If... Like, a lot of vehicles have come up. They used to be three or 60,000. A lot of them are five-year, 100,000-kilometer warranties. So they'll be selling them at 90,000 kilometers because it's still got worth. As soon as that 100,000 warranties off the vehicle, and they're hard to sell secondhand. People will buy secondhand. I mean, like if I was looking for an Apple product or whatever, and someone says, I have Apple Care on it, adds value, right? Warranties add value. Well, when warranties go... They just go, right? They go within that one kilometer, 101,000, you're done. 
So 100,000 value drops huge. So y and so you're looking 162,000. Like that's a lot for a vehicle, right? And then you're going, no, I don't know. Right? Like if you're if you're a person that drives from Edmonton to Calgary like three times a week or whatever, you're gonna you're gonna clock that up pretty quick, right? But if you're you know just driving to school and stuff like that every day or whatever, you're going, no, I I I'm not gonna keep it for eight years. I don't. Matter. Most people actually turn over vehicles every three years. That's actually the average. Okay, now here's the methods we want to talk about. Like when would you use uh, graphical? I think uh, when equations are y equals mx plus b. Like have they got it in that form already? It is fast to be able to find out your. Now, believe it or not, these were in the form y equals mx plus b. Do you see that? Okay. Wouldn't have been too bad to graph that one. Okay. But we use substitution. You could use elimination, right? Um, so when is it not appropriate? Obviously, when asked for algebraic. Okay, and and that's this is what we're responsible about. Like I would actually ask you to use elimination in this spot, or I would ask you to use um, you know substitution. But it doesn't mean you can't check it in your calculator. Now, when would you use substitution? Yeah. Yeah, coefficient. So when you have x equals or y equals you know if you have one equation in like that it's just a no-brainer put it in okay when would I not use it if both are y equals mx plus b I probably wouldn't use it or if it's in a x plus b y plus c equals zero um, I wouldn't use substitution because you've got numbers in front of the x, you've got numbers in front of the y. Um, that's definitely when I would use elimination. Okay. And again, when wouldn't I use it? You know, I wouldn't use it both these cases, right? I wouldn't use it if it if it both were in y equals m x plus b or it was x equals or y equals. Now, I caution you on this because um, my second time doing the question, and again, I'm, alwe I'm always talking to the people that want to get 100% on the test because I never talk to the students that want to get 50, okay? Um, you got to talk to students that want to get 100. And the strategy is you got to do it two ways to really verify that's correct. Three ways, you have like, you know, the chance, if you can do it three ways, same way, it's like 99.99973% chance you'll get it right, right? Every, uh, having one way with math wiseness that you actually, it's only about 75, 80% chance that it's right. Two ways brings it up to like 97, and then three ways brings it up to almost 100%. And, you know, again, I want you guys ready for the diploma. I want you thinking that way when you're doing these. Because, uh, well, you can see how this fast this semester went. You'll see how fast it is till you're in diploma mode. Okay, uh, we have a playoff game. Juice 36,500 fans. Depending on the seat location, the ticket prices were 35 or 20. The total revenue for the tickets was 940,000. Okay, this is your classic scenario. Okay, I've said this is one's going to come up all the time. You'll have two sentences. One will deal with price, money. The other deal with numbers. So what would be my numbers statement? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. We, we started with A and B. Let's go with A and B. Okay, so why don't we make 
you want to make A the cheaper one, but I would say because they fall in this order, I would make A equal expensive tickets, B equal the cheaper ones. Okay, so say your sentence now. One hundred and forty thousand. Okay, what would my other statement be? Yes. No, nope. you're doing money. Money equals number. Because these are this is money. Money, money equals money. A plus B equals thirty-six thousand five hundred. Okay, so remember, you always have your money statement and your number statement. Okay, what's the no-brainer for this one? I think substitution. Okay, or elimination's not bad on this one. What would you do if you're doing elimination? I would multiply by negative 35. That's just me, because I love to add. Okay, so if I added these together, this would be gone. This would be B. And what's 940,000 minus negative 35 times 30? Because this is going to be all one number, right? I just didn't do it there. You can do it. That works out to be. What's that? It should be 127,000, negative 127, no, 1,277,500. Okay, but if I, if I added those two together, what do I get? Because this equals negative 1,277,500. Seven, so when you add those together, what do you get? Please don't. I don't like that. Okay. Now I'm going to divide by negative 15. B equals 22,500. Now remember X or A plus B equals 36,500. I know B now. So A plus 22,500 equals 36,500. I'll minus 22,500 to both sides. And I'll get A equals 140,000. Okay, so what would be my final sentence? Therefore, 140,000 Oh, then, okay, someone wrote this wrong. 14,000. Okay. Okay, so 14,000. Tickets were $35. And 22,500 tickets. I suppose where I want were. Were 20 dollars. Okay, so maybe for the next two, let's just see if we can come up with our equations. Because I think that the solving, you got down pat. But I want to just kind of like, can we come up with our equations? 
So for Battle of Bands, one at the six, the other four dollars, three times as many students tickets as adult tickets were sold. The total revenue was seven hundred fifty-six dollars. Okay, this is a very similar one to the other one. What would be our money statement? Yes, Raven. Okay. Now, this one might be the tough one. Okay. I just want to give everyone a couple minutes to think about it. Most of you are writing in pencils, right? Write something. Write something down. What would be your other equation? Okay, Shanna, what would be your equation? Okay. So, who was more, students or, which, which do you think we sold more, student tickets or students? So if you took three times the students, would it equal adults? Okay, so for some people that's not really intuitive because they're like, that says three times as many adults went. No, no, no. That says I need to multiply the number of adults by three to equal the number of students. Right? When you make that equal statement, it gets confusing for students, what side should I put the three on? But if I took three times the students, I would even be farther away from the number of adults, right? So this is super important, okay? Hence, we are. Now, this one just screams, do what? Substitution, right? S equals 3A. So then you would just go, so we're going to sub. I'm going to take this, and I'm going to put it into there. So 6A plus 4 times 3a equals 756. Okay, so 6a plus 12a, right, is 18a equals 756 divided by 18 divided by 18. a equals 42. What do you think s is? s equals 3a, s equals 3 times 42, s equals 126. So 42 adults. And this is where the sentence is super important, right? Because do you really know what you got? And 126 students. Okay, so my experience uh, teaching this stuff is that students, once you get those equations, they're usually flying pretty good because the algebra is not that tough. Okay, last example, grade 10. Lisa won $10,000 and invested part. Oh, what a responsible little person. It passed a in a GSC, which earns liter I interest at a rate of 8% per Annum. That's what A stands for. Annum is annually per year. That's what that means. Okay. They don't use per year in uh, banks. It's always per annum. And the rest was invested in a mutual fund, which earns interest of 12% per annum. At the end of year one, Lisa earned 1,120 in interest from both investments. How much did she invest at each rate? Okay. Yeah? What if she lost some money? Uh, then, yeah, we could do that easy. Right? <coughs> but let's not. Yes? Connor? Okay, did they make 10,000 in interest? Mm -hmm. 
1,120. Now, how much money did she have? In total, how much money she got right now? No. No, right now. $10,000. Okay. No idea. So, the simple equation is she takes that money and splits it up, correct? Into two different investments. So, just X plus Y equals 10,000. Now, whenever you deal with interest, never, I repeat, never put the percent in your equation. Okay? You must always, that means, again, math is very efficient. This is identical to this. Those are the same. Per century, percent. Cent means 100. So it is uh, 8 per 100. That's what that means. Okay? What is 8 per 100? 0 0.08. So 0 0.08 at x, so an 8% interest on the x amount of money she put in, and 0 0.12 on the y that she put in earned her $1,120 in interest. So this is called the interest statement. Okay, we had the number and the money. Okay, this will be the interest. You always have to have your interest statement. So interest um, earned on X plus interest earned in Y will equal the interest. Okay, they may even say at the end of it all, she had 10100 or sorry, uh, $11,120 at the end, right? Then you're going to have to go, okay, but she started with 10. So I got to subtract that to see how much she just earned in interest, okay? So you always have to have an interest statement. And this would be the money statement. They're very different, okay? I know you're thinking, but this is money. Okay, but it's a different kind of money. One's the one I started with. The other one was interest earned. Okay? So interest earned statement. Okay, so what would be a way to do this one? Okay, substitution. Absolutely. Just bring the Y to the other side and then substitute it. I love elimination. Okay? I do. I love eliminating. It's the way my mind thinks. It's the neatest. Uh, it's nice and organized. And if, I get if you get good at them, you'll do better when it comes to 2 or 3 or 4 or 5 or 6. Okay? Because you can get up to 5 or 6. Right? Substitution's done. You can't do it. Okay? So what would I do if I was going to do the elimination method? Yeah, then I have to subtract. So I would multiply this by negative 0 0.08 to all of this. So I don't have any of the math for this. So negative 0 0.08. I'm going to write it underneath. X plus negative 0. Point, or I guess just minus, but 0 0.08 Y equals. What is 10,000 times 0 0.08? Someone has to do that for me. $800. Okay, so here are my two statements. If I add them together, this will go away. So this should be 0.04y equals 1040, right? Oh no, I get to add. Add, add, add. That should be a negative. Yeah. yeah, so 1040. Right? Somebody say something. Huh? Oh, yeah, yeah. What am I talking about? I, I was down. I was doing 80. So, yeah, 320. No, it's not 320. What are you getting? Yeah, 320. Okay. No, I'm not okay. I'm like, I'm stuck with my 80. I'm like, why was I subtracting 80? Okay. Now, 
divide by 0 0.04, 0 0.04, y equals 8,000. Good, because that's right. Gotta love when a plan comes together. So what, what is x just by, I mean, I don't know how much you gotta do, but x plus 8,000 equals 10,000. What does x equal? 2,000. Okay, so this final statement is important. 2,000 was invested at 8% interest and 8,000 was invested at 12%. Okay. The obvious question would be, why didn't you just invest all 10,000 in the 12%? Because then it wouldn't have been a fun math problem. Okay. <laughs> yeah, she'd be way richer right now. But she made a sacrifice for us. And I think that we should... Right, because half of them are going to go rotten. Right. right? But just so we could do a math problem, they made that sacrifice. Yes? Yeah, that's called diversifying your funds, and it's smarter in real life. But there's, uh, there's like Canada savings bonds that they guarantee, right? Um, when I was, I don't know how young, but it was a guarantee you would double your money because uh, interest was 8% compounded annually. If you put your money in a Canada savings bond, whatever you put it in after 10 years, it would be double that, right? And um, obviously... Canada loves it because they give you 8%. They loaned it out at 20%. So they made 12% off of and paid you your 8%, right? That's how banks make money. Kay? They give you very, very little. Like if you've got money in your bank account and they're charging you point, they're giving you 0.5% for keeping it in, they're loaning it out at 8% or 9%. That's how they make money. They are using your money and they loan it out. Right? Because they have the buying power. They can loan out $10 million when they take a bunch of people's 10000 20000 8000 Right? They give you little chunks and they're able to do that. Right? So that gives them what's called the buying power and that's how they make money. And banks do not lose money. Yes? Yeah, and uh, ATB is a small bank. It's one of the smallest, right? So you look at the Royal and stuff like that. Yeah, they're, they're not starving. Not at all. Yeah,